We're going to look at solve maze now. I'm not going to show you my code. I'm just going to go over the pseudo code here. So what do we do with solve maze? First of all, whenever solve maze is called, it's important that y and x, that the location that you send is valid. It should not be a wall. And that's very important uh, because the first thing you're going to do is explore the current location using m set explored. And all you need to do is just, it's M maze right there, set explored, use the Y X value, um, and you want to set it to be true, I believe. All right, then you have to check if you're currently in the exit. So in this really simple map, the exit would be the position that I have highlighted here in the uh, upper row on, uh, near the left. So if, if, I, if that's my position I am in, I have finished the maze. And once you've escaped, you want to print out a message like I've escaped the maze, print out the maze, and then it's really important that you quit the program and you can call system exit zero to quit. If you don't do that, it's going to keep exploring. So it's important that you exit the execution using system exit. All right, after that, if you got animated turned on, you probably don't need to use a print statement here. You can probably skip that. Uh, then you make a movement choice, and there are four choices. So this is a little bit tricky, but each choice you add or subtract one from the x or y coordinate. And I use temporary variables. I call them like new x or new y or new column, new row. And if you use x and y, it'll be new x equals the original x plus one. And if I add one to the x, that's going to the right so if I add a one to the X, my, I do something, no, what happened? I do something similar for Y. Come on. So I do new Y equals to regular Y. So the reason I don't do regular Y plus one is because then I'd be moving right and I believe Y plus one would be down. I'd be moving right and down, which is a diagonal move. And I only want to move left, right, up or down. No of diagonal moves. You can't go left and down. So you can either go left or down. You can't do both. So I set my new x to be one more than x, new y to be the same as y, and then what do I do? I need to explore that new position. And so I check, make sure it's not a wall, make sure it's not explored, make sure it's not marked, and make sure that this new x value is valid because you could have been right below the first row or the zero row and you, well, yeah, you, if I subtracted one from X, X could be zero. So I want to make sure that new X is not zero. Same thing if I'm going to change new Y, make sure new Y is not zero, unless you're escaping. That's a different story. Okay, so that's, you check and then you actually call So you have to check some conditions. If the choice is valid, you move there. This is the recursive call using those two x, y values and the maze m. So you're going to have basically four if statements, uh, or four little blocks of code, one for left, one for right, one for up, one for down. Uh, and now we need to unchoose. So how do we unexplore? You do the same thing with set explored, uh, but you set it to false now. So somewhere up here you did a set explored to true. You set now to the exact same xy coordinate, but set it to false. As long as you use temporary x and temporary y, like new x, new y, you'll keep your original xy values here. You want to make sure that you don't come back to that location in the future and try to explore it a second time. So that's what the mark is for. After you've explored and you found out it's not good, meaning that it just leads to a dead end, that's when you mark it. And mark doesn't take true or false. Once you mark something, you cannot unmark it. So you just do M mark with the XY value. If you use temporary values, you don't need to change X and Y back. Uh, and I currently case an exit. So what I did on this one, I'm actually going to change the pseudo code. 
I've already checked if the current location is an exit and that for me at least worked better. So I'm actually going to delete that and pretend like it's not there and I'll delete it from your lab assignment as well. All right, so this should, if implemented correctly, get you out of your maze.